Hello everyone. Welcome to course International Organization on Global Governance, Chapter 8, Non-State Actors and Global Governance. At the end of this chapter, you will be able to define the concept of global governance, you can discuss the role of global civil society in global governance, you can classify international non-governmental organizations and evaluate their functions in global governance, you can characterize the contribution of think tanks and pressure groups to global governance, and you can finally appraise the importance of political and bureaucratic leadership in global governance. Uh, dear friends, in this chapter, uh, there are five main titles. The first main title is Global Governance. The second one focuses on global civil society and global governance. The third one focuses on international non-governmental organizations and global governance. The fourth one discusses other types of non-state actors. And finally, the final main title focuses on political and bureaucratic leadership in global governance. Let's start with the definition of global governance. What is governance first? Governance is a particular approach to managing relations that involves the active participation of non-governmental organizations, pressure and interest groups, individuals and other political actors in decision-making mechanisms. So global governance is the activity of this type that is taking place at the global level. So the governance, the concept of governance thus refers to different uh, themes, collective governance, new public management, good governance, interdependency, social cybernetic systems, new political economy and networks. What is global civil society then? Global civil society is a concept refers to a global realm where individuals and non-governmental organizations can interact with each other, with international organizations and with states. So this is a domain at the global level includes individuals, non-governmental organizations, international organizations and states. And also it's a reaction to globalization, to the economic, political, social hegemony of multinational corporations at the international level. So it is, it is much more like a reaction to the uh, business or corporate globalization by civil societies in the world. Uh, in terms of the structure of global uh, civil society, first of all, global civil society includes different transnational networks, networks regarding or fighting against the environmental problems, networks in terms of human rights advocacy. So global civil society includes some transnational advocacy networks, some transnational operational networks as well. And also global society is defined as a global public sphere where social movements, non-state actors and global citizens operate. And the major aim of the global, uh, one of the major aims of the global civil society is to promote uh, sustainable cooperation between different nations at the global level. Uh, let's move on to the topic uh, about international non-governmental organizations and global governance. First of all, international non-governmental organizations are private, financially independent and non-commercial institutions that operate at the international level. When we look at this, their historical background, international organizations, uh, international non-governmental organizations, uh, excuse me, have existed since the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Uh, we know that United Nations officially acknowledge international non-governmental organizations, so their uh, existence are officially acknowledged by the UN and by other uh, states as well. Uh, of course, uh, during the Cold War in 50s and 60s, their activities were limited due to the in, uh, Cold War international conditions, but with the end of the Cold War, international non-governmental organizations increased their influence on uh, international public opinion very strongly. They have two basic functions. The first one is operational uh, functions. So for instance, they uh, carry on some operational activities in different countries. Also, they promote some causes. So they have an advocacy function. For instance, they, call, they promote the cause of human rights. They promote the cause of environmental issues, uh, different international organizations. What are the activities of international organizations? As I uh, just said, there are operational activities. So there are some international organizations just focus on operational activities. For instance, Oxfam. Uh, 
in order to help the poor people in less developed countries, it uh, carries on operational activities or some of them are uh, carrying on defensive activities. Some of them are carrying on ed educational activities. So there are different types of international non-governmental organizations and they carry on different act types of activities. What are the roles and impacts? We know that international non-governmental organizations are effective tools for shaping public opinion regarding common issues. For instance, think about Greenpeace. Greenpeace promotes and uh, promotes some sort of causes regarding the ecological issues. And of course, they contribute to the shaping of public opinions worldwide. And also we know that international organizations, particularly in human rights and in, uh, in the field of environment again, uh, highly contributed to the development of international law. There, for instance, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, uh, these are two important international NGOs in human rights uh, field and they their activities contributed to codification of different human rights treaties in the 70s, 80s and uh, 90s. And of course, uh, through their activities, they provide information and doc document, they report on different global issues for international uh, intergovernmental organizations too. There are other types of non-state actors uh, in, in within the global governance. The first type is uh, think tanks. Think tanks are organizations uh, that promote new ideas, that conduct new research, that lobby governments. And basically, uh, we first uh, see the early examples of think tanks in the United States. But nowadays, in there are thousands of think tanks operating internationally and nationally in different countries and di different regions. But first, we can focus on the think tanks uh, uh, that are located in the United Nations. The first generation of think tanks were seen in late 18th and early 19th, uh, sorry, late 19th and early 20th century. Uh, for instance, the examples can be given like Breaking Institute, uh, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Council of uh, Foreign Relations, and Chicago Civic Federation was the first example uh, of the first generation of think tanks. And second uh, generation of think tanks emerged just uh, with the emergence of the Cold War. Uh, for instance, RENT is a significant think tank in Rent Corporation is a significant think tank which was established in 1948 associated with the US military so conducting some research on military and international issues the third generation think tanks are generally considered as a partisan organization in the United States for instance the Center for Strategic and International Studies can be given as an example of the third generation think tanks which focus on global issues and the fourth generation think tanks are generally established by former US presidents for instance uh, the Center for National Interest was created by US President Nixon in order to conduct research on strategic realism. And also, for instance, there is another example called Carter uh, Center, which was again established by uh, former US President Carter. And also there are some other international pressure and interest groups. For instance, World uh, Confederation of Labor is an org organization that brings together like uh, national and international labor unions. Again, the European Trade of the Trade Union Confederation, Confederation is the confederation of trade unions across Europe. The Association of European Chambers of Commerce and Industry is a uh, union at the European level of Chambers of Commerce and Industry. It means that it's a union of businessmen uh, organizations at the international level. So uh, the final topic with regard to non-state actors uh, within the global governance is the political and bureaucratic leadership. Uh, with regard to global leadership in intergovernmental organizations and in non-governmental organizations, we can consider UN Secretaries General. They some UN Secretaries General perform high profiles. They promote uh, different goals, different values 
at the global level. For instance, think about Kofi Annan. He was a very influential uh, UN Secretary General. He promoted lots of, he sponsored lots of research and he promoted lots of new concepts, set agenda and uh, perform a highly uh, successful profile while he was the Secretary General. And also at the European level, the UN, European Commission, the President of the European Commission and the High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, again, uh, of the European Union, can be considered our, uh, influential political leaders at the international level. But there are some individuals uh, which cre who created some foundations, international foundations. They also... <coughs> Excuse me. They also uh, show uh, influence at the international level. For instance, the Foundation for Middle East Peace, created by uh, Mel Trough in 1979, in order to contribute to the peace process in Middle East, which is an important uh, example of an individual who is who shows who showed leadership at the global level. And also the elders uh, sponsored by Nelson Mandela, who was a South African leader and who pioneered the process of against the apartheid. He was a heroic figure and he sponsored the group of elders, which, uh, which included influential uh, global individuals such as, for instance, Ban Ki-moon, former UN secretaries or for other influential names, figures. Uh, it was created in 2007 uh, in order to focus on global issues. So these are some important uh, examples of individual leadership in terms of creation, some sort of uh, international organizations at the global levels. So uh, in this video and in this chapter, we covered first global governance and then we uh, discuss the concept of global civil society and global governance and then we focus on uh, international non-governmental organizations and global governance and we also consider other types of non-state actors and finally we discuss political the role of political and bu bureaucratic leadership in global governance thank you very much for joining me